Cross it. Hey everybody, Dr. O'Neill here. We're going to talk about spores here a little bit. So here you see on the screen I have a comparison of vegetative cells, which are, which are living, metabolically active, reproducing cells, and endospores, or spores, which are, uh, I like to put it as they're, they're basically, they're living, but they've been paused. They're not growing. They don't have a metabolic activity. So let's talk about why an organism would, would form spores first. When you put some organisms in a very hostile environment, they are able to basically pause their life until things improve. So the type of organisms that can, that can form spores, your spore formers are from the genus Bacillus, which can lead to things like anthrax and food poisoning, or the genus Clostridium, which can lead to um, tetanus and botulism and C. diff and, and other types of food poisoning and gas gangrene. So obviously very, very scary organisms. And that's because if you put most organisms in a harsh environment, they will die. If you put spore-forming organisms in a harsh environment where it's too warm, they're running out of food, whatever it might be, um, they will just wall themselves off, wall themselves off as spores and wait you out. So, as you can see here. Um, the, the key here is that spores are resistant to lots and lots of things. So if you put them in a hostile environment, they're just going to wait you out. I won't go into the gram. I already covered spore staining. Um, they don't have a metabolism. They, they've removed almost all their water. They're not growing. They are just waiting for the environment to improve. improve. They're waiting for a signal. Now, we can force those signals like heat. Heat is the best. Real high heat is the best way to force spores to germinate so we can kill them. That's why we use really high heat when we're canning our food. And, and in the laboratory, why we use the autoclave because it can wake up these spores and kill them. So let's go ahead and look at the sporulation process. This process would take a few hours. So you put you put one of those two types of organisms, the Clostridium or the Bacillus, in a situation where they're not going to survive. Instead of making a second copy of themselves, like, like you, they would in binary fission, they will make a spore copy of themselves. So this is not a type of reproduction because you see you start with one vegetative cell, you end with one spore. There's no reproduction here. Other types of organisms like fungi and stuff, they use spores, they actually have spores budding off of them to reproduce, but that's a whole different kind of spore. So let's look at the sporulation process and then we'll talk about why it matters again in a little bit. So the organism makes a copy of its DNA, just like it would if it was dividing, a membrane form around that DNA, so it's almost like a second cell is forming, but it's inside the first cell. Then you have the, the four spore, and then you have the cortex forming around it, and then the endospore coat, step five is the key there. Layers and layers of protein. This protein is designed to resist radiation, to resist heat, to resist all manner of things. So it's the, it, the, the fact that it has a big, thick protein coat around it and it's dehydrated. Those are the two things that shut off its metabolism but also protect it from the environment. And then out shoots a spore. So that's the sporulation process. And I already mentioned it can take several hours. So the spore is not an entire cell. The spore only has in it the ingredients needed to wake back up and resume metabolic activity. There's DNA in it. A little bit of RNA, handful of enzymes, a couple small molecules, and that's it. It's only enough to turn the machinery back on to create a living vegetative cell again when the environment would improve. So um, as far so the opposite. So now we made our spore, and then how long they can they can hang out as spores before they germinate is up for debate. But we know it's a very long time. So germination is the process of this spore re re regenerating into a living vegetative cell. So uh, we know that they have been able to germinate spores that are thousands of years old, from 3,000 to 7,500 years old for sure. But there have been multiple reports um, where people have said they've been able to germinate spores that are millions of years old, from 2.5 million years old to 20, 30, maybe even 40 million years old. We don't know, but, it's, but we know it's for, for a very, very, very long time. So why does this matter? Why is this clinically significant? I would say the main thing is with C. diff is a great example. Um, you know, you have no idea how many of your patients are actually already infected with C. diff. They have Clostridium difficile organisms living inside of them, but they're just most of them are walled off as spores because the environment is pretty hostile to them. There's lots of other organisms that are using up food and keeping the pH low, like these types of things. If you have a healthy, healthy gut, but this is why. Almost every person that develops C. diff infection is going to, it's going to happen after antibiotics. Antibiotics wipe out the, the competition. The spores now realize now is a good time to regenerate and become vegetative cells, and someone gets a C. diff infection. So C. diff infections are, are very, very important. They kill lots of people.
in the United States and everywhere else. So that's probably my uh, quote unquote favorite example of, of concerns about spores. If uh, the other big place to be concerned about spores is with canning, you can you you can can your food properly, but if you're not killing the spores, uh, then there then there can be some issues there. Now, most of the spores that are going to be in canned goods that survive the proper canning process are not going to cause foodborne illness. But this is why you have to take canning very very seriously. Okay, so that uh, should be everything you know about spores, uh, spore formation and germination. There regeneration. Have a wonderful day. Be blessed.